Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Monday, 25 May 2020, the week of Easter 7. Philip Melanchthon, 1497-1560. The Gospel proclaims repentance and the promise of grace and eternal life. This promise should diligently be distinguished from the law. And although the law has certain promises of its own, nonetheless, these differ from the unique promise of the gospel. Moreover, the promises of the law require the condition of perfect obedience. As is said in the first commandment, quote, I will do good to those who love me, close quote, compared to Deuteronomy 5.10. But the evangelical promise about remission of sins, justification, and the gift of eternal life is gratuitous, offered on account of Christ without a condition of our merits or our worthiness. No human language is able to express the greatness of this benefit, which God imparts to us through his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. With sin wiped out, and death destroyed, we may enjoy the vision of God in eternal life, righteousness, and joy. The promise of this benefit is only divinely revealed, as John 1.18 says, quote, The Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared it to us, close quote. For although we are born with some knowledge of the law, we certainly are not born with knowledge of the gospel. Human reason by itself no means sees this will of God, that God would send his son, that he might become a sacrificial victim for the church, that God wants to remit sins gratis. These things lie far beyond the scope of human reason, Therefore, dicta of the law ought to be carefully distinguished from the evangelical promise. This from Commentary on the Romans, the closing prayer, Samuel Johnson, 1709-1784. Almighty God, merciful Father, who art the giver of all good, enable me to return thee due thanks for thy great mercies, for the relief from diseases, for all the comforts and alleviations which I has provided, and, O oh my gracious God, make me truly grateful for the call by which thou hast awakened my conscience and summoned me to repentance. Let not thy call, O oh Lord, be forgotten, or thy summons neglected but let the residue of my life, whatever it shall be, be passed in true contrition and diligent obedience. Amen.